Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Now at 7 o'clock, a so-called fundraiser claims to be helping a Central Kentucky Fire Department, but those firemen say they're not sure where that money's going. A young kid with a big goal is trying to help a coach injured in a terrible accident. And a man accused of running over a teenager appeared in court twice in one day. We have these stories and more, plus breaking news as it happens, coming up on WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you, and thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Whitney Watzel. And I'm Sean Moody on a day where it's going to be a little bit rainy, but above freezing, and I'll take it. I will take it <laughs> as well. It'll be nice to see... Um, some precipitation, but it's actually not going to freeze, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're going to check in first with Mike Linden. He's over in the First Alert Weather Center. How's it looking, Mike? Well, it looks like Whitney and Sean, you'll both get your wish today because we will have temperatures above freezing to start off the morning, and Whitney, we may see some precipitation along with it. In fact, we're already seeing some of that. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Right now, Lexington, 41 degrees. How about Richmond, 45, and Somerset now into the above freezing club at 36. Not long ago, was sitting at around 32 degrees. And looking at Defender, some light showers pushing through the bluegrass right now, working its way through Harrison County and into Robertson County, but right on out of central Kentucky throughout our morning, but can't rule out the light showers continuing on through the rest of our morning here. But much milder, all in all, up near 56 degrees. And coming up in just a few minutes, I'll show you what I'm tracking that should arrive in time for Thanksgiving to cool things down, looking like it could be a cold turkey for the holiday. All right, Mike, thank you. Well, in the news this morning, firefighters in Madison County say a fundraising effort is now growing suspicions. A company claims to be raising money for them, but the Whitehall Volunteer Fire Chief says he didn't give permission to the company and he's not sure where that money is going. WKYT's Garrett Weimer is tracking the investigation. G59. There are several ways the Whitehall Volunteer Fire Department raises money. G57. This is one of them. But the majority of what funds us comes through the, uh, the bingo hall here. That's why the fire chief is warning folks to watch out for some fishy phone calls. He says a company is trying to sell ad space on magnets, claiming to raise money for his fire department. You don't raise money from magnets? No, we've never done, actually. Hicks says when he contacted the company to get them to stop, he couldn't get a straight answer about where they thought they got authorized to make those calls. But we've engaged in no such activity, have no contracts, really had no idea this was going on, and certainly hadn't approved it with anybody. Hicks says it's a reminder to be careful and check it out before you donate money over the phone like that. I have no idea where that money would be going to. And while this hall is full of happy, even if unlucky people, they know the cause their money is going to help. First ball is in the monitor. In Madison County, Garrett Weimer. WKYT. Chief Hicks says they always list on their website or Facebook page when they are fundraising. He says he's now in the process of alerting Kentucky State Police about the unauthorized fundraiser. New this morning, an accident at Moorhead State University has sent one person to the hospital. MSU police say 20 year old Cody Richmond fell inside of a stairwell at a campus building. The school says Richmond is not a student there. They say he fell almost 30 feet. Richmond was transported to UK Medical Center where they say he is conscious and is now being treated. A man charged with a Laurel County hit and run faced a judge twice on Friday. Terry Mullins was arraigned on DUI, assault, and leaving the scene of an accident charges. He's accused of hitting 17 year old RJ Warren with his car on September 5th. He was then arraigned a second time on escape charges. Police say Mullins escaped from home incarceration, then they caught him in Ohio. He is now being held without bond. We have an update about a teenager hit by a car in Lexington last week. Family members say 14-year-old Mason Wade is showing signs of improvement and could be out of the hospital soon. Last week, Wade was trying to walk across Manowar Boulevard with his friends when a car hit him. Crews rushed the eighth grader to UK hospital with life-threatening injuries. He suffered facial and pelvic fractures and a brain hemorrhage. Wade's mother says hopefully today will be his last day at UK hospital before he's transferred to Cardinal Hill. Police are trying to figure out who broke into several Lexington businesses. Police say someone broke into China King and a nail salon on Bryan Station Road on Thursday. Another break in happened just hours later at the Mi Picania Hacienda restaurant at the corner of Lansdowne and Reynolds Road. Police say the burglar stole cash from the register there and the whole thing was caught on tape. The owner says it's frustrating that someone would do this. 
these are people, you know, you never understand the people who want, who want to go to work anymore. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Police say the burglars took cash from the China King, but they don't think anything was taken from that nail salon. Well, he says his coach helped him when he needed it most, and now a nine year old Boyle County boy wants to return the favor. Last weekend, assistant youth football coach Dale Shepperson was seriously injured in a farming accident. He's now facing thousands of dollars in medical bills. As Jerrica Insko tells us, one of Shepperson's players, though, has organized a way to help him. Their season is over, but some young Perryville Bulldog football players will be getting together here Saturday. It's a fundraiser for one of their assistant coaches. He's only nine years old, but that's old enough to realize. I thought that he was going to die, actually. This coach's accident losing his left leg in a combine on his Perryville farm. My heart skipped a beat. <laughs> it was scary. He could have died. Will change coach Dale Shepherson's life forever. It was really sad because he was my coach for three years. Jeremiah Davis got the idea and ran with it, organizing a car wash since that's how Boyle County Youth Football raises money for their league. Usually we get a lot of cars out there, so I'm gonna expect a lot of work out here. The money, all for this coach who needs a prosthetic leg with a hefty price tag. I want to get close to 110,000. But for a coach who these football players think of as much more. I do. He's a great role model. They're more than excited. To help him out and give back a little bit since he's give, gave us so much. Anticipating many will help them help this coach. The car wash will be this Saturday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. here at Perryville United Methodist Church. In Perryville, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. And to learn how to donate online to help Coach Dale Shepperson with those medical bills, go to WKYT.com. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Now at 7.30, a so-called fundraiser claims to be helping a Central Kentucky Fire Department, but firefighters there say they're not sure where that money's going. And a young kid with a big goal is trying to help a coach injured in a terrible accident. And a man accused of running over a teenager appeared in court twice in one day. We have these stories and more, plus breaking news as it happens, coming up on WKYT this morning. Good morning to you on this Saturday. I'm Whitney Wetzel. And I'm Sean Moody, and uh, it's going to be a nice Saturday. A little bit wet, but not frigidly cold. I'm excited about that. I'll I take am it. too. I, I hope these um, warmer temperatures stick around, but I don't know if they will. We'll see. Let's check in right now with First Alert uh, in the Weather Center, Mike Linden. How's it looking there, Mike? Oh, Sean and Whitney, it's almost as if we were coming out of hibernation with the fact that it's just been so cold with temperatures below freezing for our daytime highs. But how about this? Warmer right now than where we've been for those daytime highs for about the past week, starting out this morning in the low 40s and upper 30s. Richmond ahead of the pack at 45, with Laurel County still lagging behind a bit. London there, 29 degrees. But all in all, it's improvement for everyone, up by about 25 degrees on average for most of central Kentucky. That is a big, big jump up from where we were just 24 hours ago. And we are not without some showers right now, tracking a line of activity stretching northward through Anderson County into Franklin County and eastward into Cynthiana. But that's really about it. Just some light rain showers to kick off our day, but much warmer ahead of it, near 56 degrees for the high. But coming up, I'll show you what I'm tracking for Turkey Day. And it could uh, become a bit colder than how you'd like it to be for Thanksgiving. I'll show you what I'm tracking in about 10 minutes. Firefighters in Madison County say a fundraising effort is raising suspicions. The Whitehall Volunteer Fire Chief says a company claims to be raising money for them, but doesn't have their permission to raise any money, and the fire department isn't getting paid. The fire chief is warning folks to watch out for some fishy phone calls. He says the company is trying to sell ad space on magnets and claims to raise money for his fire department. We've engaged in no such activity, have no contracts. Really had no idea this was going on and certainly hadn't approved it with anybody. Chief Hicks says they always list information about their fundraisers on their website or Facebook page. He says he's now in the process of alerting state police about those unauthorized calls. 
New this morning, an accident at Moorhead State University early this morning has sent one person to the hospital. MSU police say 20 year old Cody Richmond fell inside a stairwell to campus building. The school says Richmond is not a student. They say he fell nearly 30 feet. Richmond was taken to UK Medical Center where they say he is conscious and is being treated. A man charged with a Laurel County hit and run faced a judge twice in the same day. Terry Mullins was arraigned yesterday on charges of DUI, assault, and leaving the scene of an accident. He's accused of hitting 17 year old RJ Warren with his car on September 5th. Mullins was then arraigned a second time on escape charges. Police say he escaped home incarceration and was later found in Ohio. Mullins is now being held without bond. We have an update this morning about a teenager who was hit by a car. In Lexington just last week. Family members say 14 year old Mason Wade is now showing signs of improvement and could be out of the hospital pretty soon. Last week, Wade was trying to walk across Manowar Boulevard with his friends when a car hit him. Crews rushed that eighth grader to UK hospital. He suffered facial and pelvic fractures as well as a brain hemorrhage. Wade's mother says hopefully today will be his last day at UK before he's transferred to Cardinal Hill. Lexington police are trying to figure out who broke into several Lexington businesses overnight on Thursday. Police say someone broke into China King and the nail salon on Bryan Station Road. Another break in happened just hours later at the Mi Pequena Hacienda restaurant at the corner of Lansdowne and Reynolds Road. Police say the burglar stole cash from the registers and the whole thing was caught on video. The owner says it's frustrating that someone would do this. President Obama says he will act without Congress on immigration reform, but Kentucky Senator Rand Paul calls that move lawless. Yeah, he has been very vocal about his disagreements with the president. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy talked with Senator Paul, as well as a leader in Lexington's Hispanic community, about what's next for the country's undocumented workers. When you own a business like Freddy Peralta, you think about long term investments in your community, like buying a car, building a home. And Peralta says all those decisions are ones many undocumented workers may now be able to make. Instead of sending, uh, sending money back to, to their country, they're going to be sinking investing the money right here in the local economy. President Obama's plan will allow about 5 million undocumented immigrants to apply for three year visas to stay in the U.S. A recent study suggests that'll impact around 3,500 people in Kentucky. We are in a horse country, and you can see the construction, you can see the service, the restaurants, you can see the, all that. There is a heavy participation uh, of workers that are still are without documentation. Senator Paul agrees with leaders here in Lexington in the Hispanic community. Immigration policies must change. I think we should expand work visas. I think if you talk to farmers in Kentucky, most of them would have like more work visas, not less. What he disagrees with the president about is the way in which he enacted reforms. Our founding fathers wanted to separate power. They want the Congress to legislate and the president to execute the legislation. Peralta, who moved to Kentucky from the Dominican Republic almost 30 years ago, believes the president's current immigration reform will keep money in the Commonwealth. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Under the president's new memorandum, undocumented immigrants applying for a work permit must first pass a background check. It's been a week since open enrollment for Connect began, and Governor Steve Bashir says Kentucky's health care exchange is the gold standard for the nation. In the first week, the governor's office reports more than 45,000 people have done preliminary screenings for an insurance plan. 4,000 new accounts have been created, and almost 2,000 people have downloaded the Connect app. More than 1,800 people have visited the Connect store inside Fayette Mall. Officials with the state's health care exchange say they believe the new features will help ensure more Kentuckians. Gallup reports Kentucky had the second highest reduction of uninsured in the country thanks to Connect. Good morning. Hope you're having a nice weekend so far. It's a very interesting edition of Kentucky Newsmakers this weekend. I talked with Kentucky's new Lieutenant Governor, Crit Lou Allen, on a range of issues and about her unexpected return to the public arena. And former U.S. Senator Alan Simpson, a centrist Republican who says the conversation in Washington is hijacked by extremists. He was in town to speak to the Martin School at UK and stopped by our studio. I, I can tell you one thing, if you're, if you're a Democrat, and you start talking about entitlement reform, 
uh, and doing something to poor old seniors and veterans. I'm a veteran. I'm proud to be a veteran, but let me tell you, there are 22 million of us, and only 3 million of us ever heard a live shot go over our head from an enemy. And I think that, and many have served 20 years. I admire them all. But let's get serious. And the Defense Department, you got to get in there and dig around. You got to dig around everywhere. There's, you know, well, anyway, it's just a case of people who I think. Uh, if uh, if they know that they're going to take on a tough one uh, on the left, then they're going to be visited by the AARP. Oh, they're they're a beautiful bunch. 38 million people bound together by a common love of airline discounts and insurance discounts. I mean, they're monsters, monsters. Anybody who gets an AARP card should be embarrassed. They don't give a damn about their grandchildren, and they know it. Anyway, so they were going to be visited if they get into a primary or the AFL-CIO. And if you're Republican and talk about taxes or revenue, you're going to be visited by Grover Norquist, who will ride in on his white horse and the Club for Growth. And so what do you have? Have guys who get the job and they're insulated. Nobody's going to bother them because they didn't bow to the nuts on the right or the left. They just stayed steady where they can just be there forever, and the poor old centrists just wander around the middle trying to figure out how to guide through these guys. How do we guide ourselves out of this situation? Uh, you, you, you talk a lot about fiscal responsibility, about the need to, to, to cut the excesses, but at the same time recognize that uh, we need a, a government uh, for, uh, for many purposes. Well, I think there's a good way because uh, they, of both parties, they'll get up, especially in this last campaign, and they'll say, don't forget, I know the problem. It's serious. We can't do this to our grandchildren. Oh, boy, my heart, you know, button your shirt, your heart fell out. And then they'll say, well, we can do it without touching precious Medicare, precious Medicaid, precious defense, and precious Social Security. And you want to be in the back of the room saying, you, sir or madam, are using a terminological inexactitude, you lion SOB. That's what you say to them, because these people are lying. All the anguish we're going through right now on the budget isn't dealing with two-thirds of the budget. Get that one. Let the people hear that one. What are the two-thirds? Health care and Social Security. Those are the big, they, they're, the, they're, the, they're the mastodon in the kitchen. And yet you served on a, headed a major task force with, uh, with Erskine Bowles, and you came up with recommendations, and those things, uh, by and large, were not enacted. Well, what you meant was that they fled. <laughs> The president fled, the, the Democrats fled, and the Republicans fled because we really hit the nerve. Now to see the full interview with Simpson and our conversation with Lieutenant Governor Crit Lou Allen, set your DVR or catch Kentucky Newsmakers tomorrow morning at 6 on WKYT or at 10 a.m. tomorrow on the CW Lexington.